Now, one of the most important things with nutrition is balance. And it is tricky getting the balance right, but we're going to show you throughout the course how you can have the best efforts towards doing that. Let me give you an example. Water makes up about 60 to 70 percent of your body. Now, if it's 60 to 70 percent of your body, guess what the most important nutrient you put in your body every day is? Exactly. You just have to do the maths. 60 to 70 percent, it's got to be the number one nutrient. Now, we don't often think of water as a nutrient, but it's hugely important. Let me explain. If you're slightly dehydrated, do you think your blood would be thicker or thinner? The obvious answer is your blood's going to be slightly thicker. So guess what your heart has to do? That's right, it has to work harder. Now you're pumping blood for two people here. You need to make sure that you're well hydrated so that you can have an ease for that organ called the heart and not putting it under more stress. For example, if you look at a pregnant mum towards the end of the pregnancy, her blood volume is nearly double her normal rate that it normally is. Now that's a big stress on the heart. Now the heart can take it, but you don't want to add any extra stress to it because then that's just wasting energy. If you look at the lungs, for example, the lung is an organ that actually is quite fluid. If you wear glasses, for example, take them off, just breathe on them and see what happens. You'll see the condensation on the lens and that's because with every breath that we breathe out, you're releasing water. They say that on the average person, you release about a litre of water per day out of your lungs. Now, the reason you have water on your lungs is because the body gets rid of gaseous um, wastes. For example, if you walk down the Fulham Road where I work and you start to take in some of the smog and the soot, etc. from the cars, if your body didn't sur surround that toxin in water, it wouldn't be able to get it out of the lung again. So it's a very clever idea, but what it does is it surrounds it in water and as you cough, it actually boing, boing, boing out of the body and the body releases the toxins. But it releases other toxins as well by surrounding them with water. Now, with the um, lung, if for example you're slightly dehydrated, guess what your muscles of respiration have to do? Yes, they have to work harder because instead of expanding and contracting and being very fluid, they're a bit drier, they're a little more harder for them to expand and contract and do their job. Think about muscles. Think about muscles rolling over each other. If you're slightly dehydrated and your blood's slightly thicker, guess what your muscles have to do? Again, you're just wasting energy. We can go through every organ system in the body. So for example, let's look at the kidney. And the kidney's main role is to actually keep the blood within a certain pH. And if it gets outside of that, your body is in danger. So for example, if your body's going to be dealing with water-soluble toxins like the kidney does, you need plenty of irrigation to actually wash out those toxins, send them to the bladder and eliminate them out of the body. If you're slightly dehydrated, the actual acidity levels in the kidney will build up and you'll start to create erosion and wear and tear within the kidney. If you think about your bowel, your digestive tract, if you're slightly dehydrated, do you think that you'll be able to eliminate every day like you should? No, you're going to be more constipated. So again, you're going to then start to actually draw water from the bowel because the body, if it's dehydrated, will start to take water from wherever it can. And I promise you, if the body's dehydrated, it will take water from the bowel. And guess what? That water is not very clean. So you need to make sure that you're well irrigated so that actually your body can eliminate those toxins and not have to draw that water back into the system. If you think about your eyes, your eyes are actually a very fluid organ. If you're slightly dehydrated, your eyes are never going to work as same, so you're never going to feel as relaxed. Because your eyes help you with balance, they help with understanding your environment and feeling confident. What about your brain? If you're slightly dehydrated, your thinking won't be as good. Ever had a headache when you've been dehydrated? They're not a pleasant headache. You do not want to get to the state where you're starting to get headaches because you're dehydrated. That is the body saying, help, I'm in danger here. As you can see, if we go through every organ system, the skin, for example, will not have the same flexibility and elasticity if you're slightly dehydrated. If you think about your joints, in your joints, and as a pregnant woman, your joints, especially around your pelvis and your knees, are under a lot more stress than they normally are. If they're not as fluid, 
there's going to be more stress through them. You do not want to create stress and, and strain through those joints. They're already under enough stress and strain. If you think about your liver, the liver has to actually deal with all the toxins in the body, as you know. And if you're slightly dehydrated, then you're not flushing those toxins through as, as easily as you should. Water is only one component of nutrition, and yet, as you can see, it's a hugely important component. Please don't underestimate water. And we've got some other information on the site around how to get the best resources of water because I know that the people will tell you that tap water is not that bad, but I'm not totally convinced. You know, you need to either be looking at some filtered water or bottled water. And I know these are still not as ideal as, they would, as we would like them to be. And there's no argument about that. That's absolutely true. But it's like the organic conversation. You know, people say to me, well, is organic really organic? Well, unfortunately, it's not. You know, there's been so many categories of organic now, and that's really unfortunate that people can actually put their own little definition of what organic is and still call it organic. If you want the gold label or the gold standard for organic, you need to see and, and um, take on products that actually have a soil association stamp on them because the soil association as rigorous tests and they do believe that things have to be organic. Some of the producers and some of the supermarket chains have actually created their own brand of organic. However, I will say this, would you rather have some vegetables with one ounce of toxins in or 10 ounces? Because for me, it's a no brainer. Even if they are allowed to put a few chemicals on like some of them are with their organic brands, I would still rather have those than the ones that have got a lot more toxins on them. On top of that, if you start to think about the message we're sending out to suppliers, almost like a protest, that we want better food for our mums, our babies, our dads. Because at the end of the day, if you start to think about all the chemicals we're putting on our food, it's unbelievable nowadays. Believe it or not, some foods are sprayed up to 14 times once they leave the farm. We're not even talking about the sprays that they put on on the farm, we're talking after they leave the farm. Because most people are not made aware that fruit and, vegetable, fruit and vegetables today are often picked before they're ripe so they can make the journey into the market and they won't go off. They then have to spray them with a colouring agent, an antibacterial, an antifungal, a gloss to make them nice, uh, look nice and sexy. You know, these things are just not told to us and it's really outrageous that people are getting away with this type of, you know, uh, treatment to our food and we're not even told about it. It is estimated that the average person can ingest per year, if they don't eat organic, one to two gallons of pesticides. Now that's a lot of toxicity and we want to get away from that and make sure that this soil that you're creating for the baby is the healthiest that it can be so that this baby has the best chance of having a healthy life in the future.